The word integrity comes from the root word integer, which means a whole number, not a fraction. And that also relates to our heart spiritually, that I believe that God wants us to have an undivided heart. Hi, my name's Ricky Watt. I'm pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church. And I wanna just take a few moments today to share God's word with you. If you have your Bible, take it and turn to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Recently, I was having my quiet time alone with the Lord, and I was actually reading a verse earlier in Matthew chapter 5. And as I got done reading that verse, God just brought me to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible says there in Matthew 5 and 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I don't know about you, but one of the desires of my heart is that I would see God, that I would see God working in my heart and my life each day, that I would see God at work in my family. I would see God at work in my church. And I believe one of the keys to us experiencing that is to have an undivided heart. Again, I want you to take your Bible and turn to Psalm 86 and verse 11. Psalm 86 and verse 11. And this is what the Bible says there. Psalm 86, verse 11. David is writing this, uh, this great psalm. And he says there in Psalm 86 and verse 11. He says, teach me your way, O Lord and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Again, it goes back to that thought of we can either have a divided heart or we can have an undivided heart. But he says the key to us giving God glory in our lives is that we would have an undivided heart. Now, as we think about uh, that phrase, undivided heart. I, I want us to think of the definition of what something being undivided is. Well, of course, it would be, first of all, uh, something that is not divided, uh, something that is not separated or broken into parts, something that is not mixed with other feelings or intentions. As we see here in Matthew 5 and verse 8, he says, I want you to have a pure heart. That I believe one of those keys to having that pure heart is to have an undivided heart. That, that we would be solely focused on God and his plan and his purpose and his glory working in our daily lives. Uh, one of the things that I think sometimes we, we wonder about when we think about uh, having an undivided heart is, is having tunnel vision. Uh, I was reading about that just recently, and it said that tunnel vision is the loss of peripheral vision with retention of central vision, resulting in a constricted circular tunnel-like field of vision. And God's saying to us, I want you to have that kind of focus on me. I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with spiritual ADD, that, that I get distracted by so many things in my life. It gets my, my uh, attention off of God. And God has to draw me back over and over again to, to focusing on him. And as I do that, I see that God begins to develop a, a, a united heart, a singular heart in my spirit, that, that I'm focused on God, that I'm, 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 my, my attention is set on him. And so tonight, I want us just to take a few minutes and think about what that looks like in our daily lives. Uh, Spurgeon, great preacher of yesteryear, said, Having taught me one way, give me one heart to walk therein. He said this, For too often I feel a heart 
and a heart. And, and what Spurgeon means by that is that uh, when we think of the opposite of a, a unified heart or an undivided heart, the opposite of, of that is a double heart. And in the Hebrew, they would describe that as a heart and a heart, that, that we are, we're divided, that we are conflicted, if you will, in the purpose, the direction of our lives. And as a result, we struggle with what it is that God wants us to do, where it is God wants us to go how God wants us to follow him, how God wants us to serve him. And maybe you're watching this right now and you fight that battle of, of you know, uh, having one desire in, in your flesh and then feeling another desire in the spirit that the flesh is pulling you one way and the spirit of God is, is drawing you another way. And so we must be able to allow God to give us an undivided heart, to give us clear focus and direction on him and his plans and his will and purpose for our life. Uh, as you think about that, look over Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. Galatians 5 and verse 17. Again, Galatians, the book of Galatians is actually a letter from Paul to a church. And he says there in Galatians 5 and verse 17, he says this, he says, um, there it is. He says, for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature, they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. Again, he's saying when we are, are fighting a, a divided heart, when we are struggling with keeping our focus on God, that that, that hinders us from having the pure heart that Jesus speaks of in Matthew chapter 5 and being able to really experience God in a personal way in our daily lives. Um, the reality is, is that you and I, when we have a divided heart, we are weak. Division causes weakness. You see that even in the foundation of a house that People will say, if you see, if you look around your house and you see a crack anywhere in the foundation, you need to, to get that fixed because that is a sign of weakness. The same is true of us spiritually. When we feel like we are button heads between our flesh and the spirit in our life and we are living a divided life, we're living with a divided heart. It causes us to be Weak. In James chapter 1, the Bible speaks of that. You can look over there with me in James chapter 1 and verses, um, James 1 verses 6 through 8. And this is what the Bible says there. It says, but when he asked, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown tossed, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. So friend, when we are struggling with being focused on God, on having a... a um, an undivided heart and walking with the Lord. When we have that struggle, it causes us to be weak. And, and James writes and he says, you know, when we ask and, and we doubt when we ask, he says that we're like a double-minded man. He said, we're tossed to and fro. We're like a feather in the wind. And he says, that man should not believe that he'll receive anything from the Lord because when we're double-minded, when our hearts are divided, 
We struggle not only to follow God, but just to see him at work in our daily life. And, and so I, I believe that it's so important for us to, to just renew our commitment to the Lord, that we want to focus on him. We want to have tunnel vision and focus on him, but we also want to have an undivided heart where we're fully focused on God's plan, God's will, God's calling, God's direction in our life. Uh, there's a great old hymn that, that has these words. It says, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Is that the cry of your heart today? Lord, I, I sense in my heart that there's this, this pull and this tug to wander. But Lord, I, I present my heart to you afresh and anew that you would do your work in me. Because listen, friend, he can't do a work through you if he's not first doing a work in you. You can't share what you don't possess. You can't lead someone else to a place that you're not there yourself. And so we need God to, to uh, fine tune our vision, to fine tune our heart, to be focused and unified on the things of God and his plan and his purposes for our lives. May we be motivated and enabled by the Spirit to imitate men like Paul, uh, who in Philippians chapter 3, let me read you what Paul says about that. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, Paul writes and he says this, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He says, I'm not looking back. He said, I am focused. He says, one thing I do. Can you say that today? God, there is one thing in my heart that I'm focused on, and that's you. I'm focused on your plan, your purpose, your desire for my life, and I'm focused on obeying you and following you. And friend, when we do that, God gives us wisdom. He gives us strength. He, he gives us direction. Why? Because we are walking with him on a daily basis to experience his work in our lives, again, going back to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Do you want to see him? Do you want to see him working in your life? Maybe you're watching this right now and you just feel sort of in a rut or you feel uh, like you're in just sort of a, a cold place in, in your marriage, in your family in your church. And God's saying, listen, if you want to see me, have a pure heart. Have an undivided heart. Be singularly focused on God. It's like I heard someone years ago say that we need to be um, independently dependent on Jesus. That means we're dependent on him and him alone. For him to lead us and guide us and direct us in our life. So I just want to close our time together by praying and asking God to give us an undivided heart. To give us a renewed focus and, and, and desire for the things of God that we would see him working in our lives. So let's pray together right now. Father, I pray for every person who's watching this video right now. God, I pray that you would make yourself real in our lives. But God, that we would understand in order for us to see you at work, 
in our lives, in our marriages, in our homes, in our churches. God, we must be focused on you. God, I pray you would give us the heart of Paul that says this one thing I do. This one thing I desire is that I will carry out the purposes and plan of God for my life. Lord, would you help us remove the clutter, remove the things from our heart and minds that distract us from, from seeing clearly, from hearing clearly, from as we read your word, understanding clearly what it is you have to say to us. And God, help us walk daily with you. God, help us to experience your work in our daily lives. Because God, we know that's your will. We know, God, that's your desire is for us to walk with you and experience your work and touch in our daily lives. Help us, God, to do that. And Lord, I pray if there's anybody watching this right now who's never trusted their heart and life to you, that God, today would be the day that they would just surrender their life to you. That they would understand that we are all sinners. We have all missed the mark of your plan for our lives. We've all disobeyed you. And because of that, we are lost without Christ. But Jesus came to this earth to die on the cross and shed his blood to purchase our pardon, our redemption on the cross of Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose again on the third day to conquer death, hell, and the grave. And your word says, if we'll confess our sin and call out to you, your word says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So God, I pray today, if there's anybody watching right now, who needs Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of their life, that they would call on you before it's too late and settle that, make their peace with you. But God, I also pray for all the ones who are watching right now, who are struggling with, with losing their direction. They're struggling with a divided heart. God, I pray that you would help us Focus on you. Renew our commitment to focus on Jesus. To study your word. To pray. And to sharpen our, our focus on you. And that God, as we do that, you would begin to remove the things that divide our heart. Give us a united heart. An undivided heart. To seek you first. Your word says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to us. And I pray we would experience that as we walk with you daily. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, thanks again for joining us for this time of Bible study. Uh, I, I wanna encourage you to renew your commitment to focusing on God, to, to, to allow him to, to, um, to sharpen your focus on him and for him to allow him to take away anything that's caused you to be divided in your devotion and your commitment to him. And as you do that, you're going to begin to see God work in your life, in your family, in your church and do things you've, you never imagined that he could do because that's who our God is. He is the one who has no impossibilities. He can do anything. He can change anybody. He can change anything if we just trust him and if we just put our faith and trust in him completely. So thanks for watching today. As always, if you have a prayer need, that you'd like for me to pray for you about. If you made a commitment to God uh, as a result of watching this video, I'd just like for you to send me an email to rickywatt at gmail.com. That's all lowercase, rickywatt at gmail.com. And I promise you, I'll pray for you. If there's any way that I can encourage you, I would love to do that. 
But thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you and have a great day.